telling everybody the good news, the core of the joy, and I appreciate it. I really get you there. I appreciate you from across the top. <laughs> What's going on, y'all? This is Josh from Team Super Shoe, and welcome back to another episode of The Shoe Show. We are not talking about size 15 mammoth boots. No, we are talking about the one and only Corey LaJoy, the Super Shoe of NASCAR, and just anything NASCAR-related. Uh, super pumped to have you guys here today. Uh, we don't necessarily have anybody on that is a uh, LaJoy or Spire-related uh, driver. How well? He, uh, however, he does drive the uh, joy of seatings in his uh, race cars. Um, but we all love a good underdog story. As Corey LaJoy fans, we we understand that battle very well. Bringing on the one and only Mr. Greg Van Alst. He is um, a stock car driver for Arkham Menard Series uh, full-time. He is right now the points leader. Um, he also is team owner of that car. Uh, he's run a few Xfinity and truck races, and uh, most notably uh, the Daytona race from last year in um, – the ARCA race, he won in, uh, I believe it was in February, and um, uh, it was quite a memorable uh, victory uh, lap. I'll, we'll show it to you in the transition here, but um, uh, it's really cool to see people like that, um, like Greg, uh, get victory because he is somebody that is in his early 40s. Uh, you know, he's got, you know, he's got a life, a big life outside of uh, racing, and he has kind of uh, taken up racing and late in his uh, life after he's already established a company out in Indiana. And, um, you know, he's, uh, he's an inspiration and, uh, and it's cool to see people that we can relate to, right? A lot of these guys that are in the cup garage uh, or trucks or Xfinity, a lot of these guys are, you know, kids that for somebody like me uh, getting close to 40, um, I can't really relate to them too much. So it's cool to see him. Um, and I'm excited to see this weekend at Talladega. We kind of preview Talladega. Obviously, he knows how to get it done at Super Speedways. So we're going to be cheering uh, Greg on this weekend uh, in the Arkham Menard Series race. I believe it's at uh, 1230 uh, uh, Eastern time at Talladega on Saturday. So make sure you uh, check that out and cheer for him. Uh, if, uh, you could please, before we go into the interview, like comment, subscribe, all the things on YouTube. Uh, if you're on the audio realm, please rate and review. And, uh, also if you haven't hung out with us on Instagram, somewhat of a new account that we're kind of putting up, um, reels and, uh, you know, hope that you guys can come and follow us there as well. And finally, uh, where it all started team super shoe on Facebook. It's a group on Facebook where we talk much more there than we do here. This is more or less just an outlet, uh, for that page. Otherwise y'all, uh, please sit back, relax and enjoy Greg Van Alst. All right. We'll start in three, two. Man, well, I feel, feel honored that y'all, uh, asked me to be on the shoe show. a great job great way to time out the run be able to be there he was up front the entire race had a fast car congrats he doesn't great even finish. want to back off yet he's still on the gas he's are still, on the, still on the gas are you sure great are you sure we won this race <laughs> oh great fan also i met his wife earlier he has four kids two are here i hope he can cover all 20 sponsors in one interview it's gonna be hard this one <laughs> so good. See that vein popping out of his head? Oh, guys like me are supposed to do that. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> he collects the checkered flag. I'm not sure you can put it into words, but the emotion that you're feeling right now, how much heart went into this win? Oh, it's everything I got. It's the only Speedway car we got. There's no way I was going to bring it home without the steering wheel of the trophy, and that was it. This is for all the short track racers out there that don't think you can get to this level. I've worked my ass off to get here, and we did it! Yeah! All right, y'all. We are here with uh, stock car driver, team owner, and entrepreneur, Mr. Greg Van Alst. How are you, sir? Good. Thanks for having me on. 
Yeah, man. Thank you very much for coming on. Um, you know, this is normally a show we talk about Corey and Spire related stuff, but uh, you know, we also love a good underdog story. Um, and uh, we have dates or not Daytona. We have Talladega coming up this weekend, and uh, you obviously know how to get it done at the uh, the plate races or whatever. I guess super speedways they're called. And uh, so we're excited to bring you on and just talk about your career, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, I I knew. When I saw you get that Daytona win watching the ARCA race, I was like, there's a guy that I could pull for. There's a guy I would love to to know a little bit more about him because you, know, you see people win these races and sometimes, you know, they, they try to hide their emotions and you were just, there's just raw, pure emotion. And for people like me, you know, seeing a guy like you getting out and winning and, you know, then learning a little bit about your backstory. I was, that was pretty good. And you made, you made a fan immediately with me. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I, I, I didn't know how to react. I never won Daytona, obviously. So, uh, you know, I, um, I, I, I still can't believe it. I chuckle every time I see the, the, the highlight reel. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, I, I mean, I, let all my emotions show right there. So we're pretty much when when I had the idea to try to get you on to the shoe show, uh, the idea I had in mind was I wanted to introduce you to a fan base that we've already got a pre-existing fan base that may not watch the Arca series um, and may not be familiar with who Greg Van Ost is. So um, tell us a little bit about how you got to that speedway that day. Like, where do, where do we, I, I know, I know a little bit, but, you know, just for those that have no idea who you are beyond the Daytona race, when, you know, who do we need, what do we need to know about Greg Van Oss? Oh man, that's a long story. Um, you know, we need to, may need to do a part two, but, uh, <laughs> um, so started racing, um, I think 15 years old, bought my first go-kart after working at a, uh, at, at a, uh, a brick Mason's company, um, here in town and then just kind of progressed through some ranks. Um, life kind of happened and, uh, got married, had kids and, um, the dream was always there. Uh, but financially I just knew I never could. Well, I started a fence company and, um, just uh, worked, uh, you know, every day, every night. I was working third shift at a factory doing the fence company. Got back into racing. Uh, started a whole career over. I mean, it, it, I started back with go karts and got into a modified and then late models. Um, and uh, met um, uh, Chris Barkdahl with CB Fabricating along the way. Um, and uh, um, you know, that's, that's how the, the kind of the quick backstory, uh, I mean, there's so much that goes into it. Um, but, uh, won a championship with the CRA super series in 2019. Um, that put me, uh, in running to do the, uh, Daytona test with Andy Hillenberg and, um, gosh, my first lap on the racetrack, I knew it was, I, I had to race there. And, uh, uh, a year went by, um, and uh, I uh, actually reached out to uh, Frankie Kimmel um, to see if he knew where any um, Speedway cars were, and um, he gave me contacts for some people within ARCA and ultimately got hooked up with Chad Bryant, and uh, that's where our, our, uh, our equipment started coming from there in the beginning, and and uh, he hooked us up with Jim Long, which Jim Long's, you know, got a long history with Hendrick Motorsports. Um, and, uh, you know, that's that's the the quick uh, background of how we how we kind of progressed into into that Daytona race. So you started the 35 team uh, after that test that was in 2021 or uh, the test was in 2020. Um and then uh, we entered the 2021 race. Okay, so from from what I read, 2022 was your first full time effort trying to run the full season. 
Yeah, um, 22, we ended up um, selling all of our late model stuff and kind of put everything we could into the 22 season. Uh, ended up fifth in driver points, I think seventh or eighth in owner points. And, um, yeah, put together a full season. And the, the whole goal in 23 was to to do another full season. Um, obviously, we won. Uh, Daytona set off to a great year. Um Got uh, got to Phoenix, ran really well there, um, kind of got booted on the last restart, fell back. But um, then the next few races weren't very good to us. Uh, and my, uh, my father passed away in April. And um, I just kind of made the decision that, you know, racing uh, full-time, trying to be a, a full-time husband, father, business owner, um, something just kind of had to give right there. Um, it's just a lot of emotions and, and things and, uh, racing was the, the thing that I just had to kind of, I, I didn't want to, I don't want to say I took a step back, but it was just, it was just a lot. And, um, I, I just, uh, had an opportunity to, to do some Xfinity and truck stuff. Um, and ultimately, uh, we, we all know how, how that works. Um, you know, you, you gotta bring sponsorship or, or financial backing to the table. And, and, um, you know, I thought, uh, that would be a perfect fit, you know, go, um, go run some Xfinity races, go run some truck races with CB as a partner. And, um, I wouldn't have to work so hard out in the race shop and, um, felt like it kind of was working um you know we didn't have the best of luck in the two xfinity races and then the the truck stuff we were um starting to make headway uh i felt and then uh uh my arch nemesis of uh talladega uh showed up and i uh i broke my back um in a truck wreck there so with the the, the xfinity starts and the truck starts was any of that like you win Daytona, do you bring do you bring your own money from Daytona, or was that the guy that was sponsoring you just kind of was excited that you were doing so well and was like, hey, look, let's see what we can do with this, or how did that work uh, out? It was a it was a little bit of everything. Um, you know, obviously, uh, CB was on the uh, on the Xfinity car in the truck. He was a major partner. Um, I had um, some financial contributions to it. That's why Top Choice Fence was on it as well. Um, you know, we had multiple partners uh, through the year that would help us out. Uh, and we've, we found a lot of success with, um, you know, a lot of B post, C post sponsors, you know, $500,000, $2,500 sponsors. Of course, you know, you always like to get the, uh, uh, the, the you know, the, the big ticket sponsor. Um, but, um, you know, we've, we've found a lot of success and you start stacking those and, you know, for, for guys like us, it adds up. Um, but yeah, for the most part, um, you know, CB fabricating top choice fence, that was the, uh, uh, the major, uh, contributors to, uh, making the Xfinity and the truck programs happen. So now I was there, uh, in October when you had the crash at Talladega and I was following you. Uh, like you said, I became a fan after I watched you win. So to hear that you had these additional starts and Xfinity and, and truck coming up and to see that you were going to be running at Talladega, I was excited. So I had my camera out, I was watching and um, I saw the crash. And at least from where I was sitting at the start finish, um, from my view, it didn't look that bad. How bad did you actually get hurt with that impact? Um, so NASCAR put a report together and I hit it 35 G's at, uh, like eight degrees from head on. Um, and, uh, as soon as I hit, I knew I broke my back. Um, I hit, uh, I think I mic'd up and said, oh, I just broke my back. And then, uh, I teased that I went to sleep. So, uh, the next thing I know is I was sitting and there was a uh, track official there putting my window net down for me um it was kind of weird like when i uh i guess came to 
um, you know, it, and it wasn't very long, but um, when I, when I, you know, I don't, I, I don't want to say came to, but uh, I guess that's what happened. I had this like urge that I had to get out of the truck. Um, it was weird. I've never felt anything like that in a race vehicle. And, and uh, I was able to get out on my own. Uh, I think I took like two or three steps into the ambulance and then collapsed. And that was, uh, that was, that was uh, the most movement that I wanted to do for, for several days there. Was that, so uh, that, was, was that from impact you uh, breaking your back and getting that feeling Im- immediately? Was it from the wall or was it from slamming the ground after getting airborne a little bit? No, it was from hitting the wall. Um, the, the, uh, the impact from, from hitting the ground after being lifted in the air, barely registered on the, on NASCAR's uh, graph that they, that they showed us. So at that point, what was your, what was your recovery process like? Uh, it was just time. Um, so um, I, I was medically cleared in, in January. Um, but uh, I mean, just like any other injury where you, where you break a bone. Um, so I had a T12 compression fracture. Um, I just mowed my yard a little while ago and just, you know, the, the roughness from, uh, the riding mower, <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it irritates it. So, uh, I'm still reminded not, not, not so much daily, but every couple of days that I'm still, um, still tender there. So how do you go from, well, let me ask this first. What did that do? How did that change the rest of the season? Like, what were your goals past Talladega and then obviously that that changed I'm assuming when you got hurt but what was the the plan before that happened um so the the goal for the rest of the year is we were going to run the 20 truck with Young's we still had Homestead and Phoenix um I was really looking forward to those two races because I felt like uh um the truck that we were going to have at at Homestead and at Phoenix uh, was kind of like the next level uh, from uh, what I had felt in the truck and relayed back to the, the crew chief and the owner, you know, of what I thought we needed. Um, that was the, the two races that I was really looking forward to. Uh, obviously, I'd never been to Homestead, but I had experience at Phoenix. So I thought for sure that, uh, you know, we, we would run pretty well. So now following you. I noticed this year you've expanded your team to two cars. Um, is that a result of just kind of concentrating more on your ARCA efforts or like, is the, the, the truck and Xfinity stuff kind of just been pushed to the side for the time being or like what's, so, what is. So I wasn't sure exactly what we were going to do. Uh, we kind of kicked around, um, selling some of the arca stuff and buying a truck and just running as many truck races as we could out of our own shop um and then uh just in conversations with people people were like well why don't you try to uh lease out the second car and uh we started putting some feelers out there um you know and met uh isaac johnson that's uh that's been the one in the the second car in the 34 car and um uh you know, that just kind of changed my thought process of what we should do. And, uh, I thought, you know, if, if we can, if we can lease it out a couple times, we can, you know, CB's back on this year. Uh, we got a deal with Zaki Ali for, for, uh, multiple races. Um, you know, so between those two, um, you know, we hit Prescott tire pros up, uh, we got them for, uh, Phoenix, we actually just landed a, a, a deal for Dover. Um, you know, just just uh, trying to focus on the ARCA program. And, um, you know, that's that's kind of where we're at. Um, uh, we had an opportunity uh, to um, get kind of hooked up with uh, another team over the winter. Uh, and it just uh, seemed to it just kind of, I don't want to say it seemed to take longer than what everyone wanted it to, but, uh, it was just, you know, it started back, I think in November and then 
gosh, it was like two weeks before the test uh, when everything started getting finalized and and uh, it just didn't work out. Um, but, you know, there may be something there in the future. Uh, but uh, but yeah, for, for the most part, we're just uh, concentrating on the ARCA program. Now, in addition to getting the money from leasing the, the second tr uh, car, do you get because like with the NASCAR teams, the bigger teams, and they have multiple drivers in the cars. Do you, with that additional driver, do you get additional information from that car that might help you run in your car? And so y'all can both kind of grow uh, performance wise as a team. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we've only done the, the two, so we done Daytona and we done Phoenix. Um, but that's all, that's all, ultimately that's the goal is to, if you, if you take one car to the track, you can only, you know, learn one set of whatever it is that you're working on. If you take two, then you're just doubling your learning curve. Um, I, I brought in, uh, Kevin Shannon, uh, which was my late model crew chief through, uh, the championship, uh, year there and, and, um, in 2020 and, um, you know, he, he's a, he's an asset to our team. Uh, and that's, that's all part of the plan, right? You know, you bring in, uh, people that you've worked with and, and people that you know are, are good at what they do. And, and, uh, the goal, you know, is to obviously, uh, just make our team better. And, and, uh, at any, any time you get to go to the racetrack, uh, you know, I tease, uh, you know, I, I got my boy racing and I tease him. We either win or we learn, you know, and that's, that's kind of my philosophy. So if we're taking two cars to the, to the racetrack, we can, we can double what we learn. You mentioned, you mentioned, uh, your boy racing. Is that the young man that was at Anderson Speedway this past weekend? Yes, sir. <laughs> he came out with a fourth place finish. He was stoked or what? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, super proud dad moment. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, for those that, obviously don't know watching the show uh my 12 year old son uh ran his first late model race this this weekend at our local track uh qualified fifth and and finished fourth uh had one little skirmish uh a guy spun in front of him and he kind of got collected into that but then uh yeah the rest of the race was pretty flawless now how did he come out of the car just was he just like amped and all right, when are we going again or? Oh yeah, pretty much. It was a 40 lap race. And, uh, uh, you know, we was teasing him that, you know, he's gonna, he's gonna have to start doing longer races. And he's like, Oh, I got another 20 in me, but I don't know about another 40. So we'll <laughs> see the next race is a 75 lapper. And, um, uh, you know, he's, he's got a long, long road ahead of him. He's got to learn a lot. Uh, but I'm hoping that, I can shorten that learning curve for him. Right. And that's, uh, your son's name is Ryder, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, from us at Team Super Shoe or Shoe Show, good luck, Ryder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, um, hoping that, uh, I'm hoping one day, uh, you know, all part of the, the Spire program, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, one day he's, maybe doing some driver development stuff for uh, Carson Hosovar and his late models. So me and Carson <laughs> are buddies. So I had to hit him up. Oh, that's cool. that. Yeah. Now um, let me ask you this going to Talladega this weekend. Sorry. I didn't mean to go from the high and talking about Ryder just going <laughs> out there and, and getting that, that fourth place finish. Now tone it down a little bit. Talladega's this weekend coming up. You got a little trepidation. Yeah, there's Ryder right there. Look at that. Ed Anderson Speedway. Carrying carrying his papa's number. Look at that. Yep. Yep. Now that was um uh, that was yeah, yeah. So you nervous heading back to Dega this weekend or like ready no, to get no. the monkey off your back or yeah, I'm ready to get the monkey off my back. I'm not nervous about it. Um I don't I don't get nervous for races much anymore, except for Saturday night. I was, I was ready to throw up, uh, watching him, but I don't, I don't get nervous for my racing. Um, 
I don't know if it's just experience or, uh, you know, it's just, I know I can't control what I can't control. And, um, but I, I'm definitely going to try to, to take a little bit of a different approach. Um, last year at Talladega, uh, not so much in the truck, but in the Arca car, I was, I was trying to be aggressive and, and get to the front, uh, the way they do the, um, starting position, I think we're going to end up being like 21st or 22nd. I hadn't seen it. So, um, you know, just like Daytona, I'll see what the initial green flag gives us. And then I'll probably try to settle in. Hopefully we can make it inside the top 10 fairly early. Uh, and then I'll try to find a couple drafting partners and just ride. Um, you know, being the points leader uh, is, is a pretty big deal. Um, obviously, we want to win. Um, but leaving Talladega as the points leader is our goal. Uh, so I would love to roll our car into the trailer just like we did at Daytona. Um, but leaving the, leaving the track as the points leader is what our, our, uh, our goal is going to be. So bringing up the fact that you're leading the points right now, how does it affect your team when a team like Venturini runs uh, these one-off races or two-off races with these guys who aren't regulars. I mean, they go out there and, you know, if you're watching the ARCA series, you know the name Venturini Motorsports. They're kind of like, I guess, the the Hen Rick Hendrick-style team of, of the ARCA series. So when they go out there and they're winning races, but you're able to maintain that points lead because they're coming and going – you all for that or yeah i mean i i love the venturinis they're they're great people they they help us um in in different ways um uh throughout the season and whatnot but uh yeah they they uh you know i think they got three full-time drivers this year and then maybe one car is kind of bouncing uh, as a you know different drivers um but yeah i mean it's it's uh you know, they're, they're a tough team to beat. Obviously, they got uh, uh, the TRD backing. Um, but it, it makes you feel good when you can can race door-to-door -door with their drivers, whether it's the driver that's, you know, in for the full season or it's the driver that's just in for that particular race. Um, you know, they do a lot of sim stuff, and they work with their drivers and driver coaching and, you know, the stuff that we don't have access to. So, um, you know, just to even uh, – just to be, you know, in the same conversation uh, when you go to the racetrack uh, and and being mentioned like going to Talladega, I think ARCA put out an article today that said that we, you know, we would be ones to watch that could win the race. Um, you know, that's that's huge when you're racing teams like the Venturinis. So what is your going from the progress where you were a part time team, then full time? You win Daytona, you're in Xfinity races, you're in truck races. Um, you got a team now with two cars. What has, is there an end goal for Greg Van Oss as far as what you're doing? Or are you just getting in a car, driving one lap at a time until it's time to pass it on to maybe your son or you just the passion's no, gone or I, uh, no, no, no. The, the, I, I don't know that the passion will ever leave. I, I've been very passionate about racing, um, you know, longer than, than I, I don't want to say longer than I can remember, but I know around three years old, I, I can remember that far back and the passion was there. I don't think the passion will ever leave. Um, I think the passion will change. Um, my, my end goal uh, is that we are building a program uh, and building a future for uh, my son, Ryder. And then obviously I have another son, Easton. Um, he's done a little bit of racing. Um, and, um, you know, if, if, uh, if this is the path that they so choose, uh, I'm hoping that my program is strong enough that maybe we can, you know, get a factory of, you know, whatever manufacturer to, to help us out along the way and, you know, create a path where maybe we do have a two car team where one, one car is either myself or, you know, in the future, it's one of my sons and, you know, another driver. 
Um, so, you know, long term, uh, I am a racer through and through and, and will be racing. Um, so, so, uh, we, we actually have two full-time, um, uh, crew members, uh, this year, which is, which is a first for us. We've never had any full-time. It's always been volunteer, uh, crew, crew members. Um, but we do have two full-time crew people now, and that's, that's all part of building, uh, the Greg Van Oss Motorsports brand. Um, and, and in hopes that, uh, you know, every year we build a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more and just, just see where the future takes us. Well, I mean, I, I, firstly, I want to thank you again for, for coming on and, and talking with us. Like I said, when I, when I saw you climbing out of that car and just fist pumping and you had the, you had the reporter there waiting for you to start finish. You had her and tearing up and you had, you had me over here doing fat white man cartwheels, nearly breaking my neck just because, <laughs> because it just, the, just the, the passion and the excitement was, was real. It was heartfelt. It wasn't anything that you might get from one of these guys that wins races all the time. It's like, well, this one's special. And no, I mean, you didn't, you could tell how special it was. And then, seeing uh seeing y'all post race you know the the pictures of y'all celebrating victory lane i think ultimately that's what that's what it comes down to that's what the sport's supposed to be about and uh, so i want to thank you again i appreciate you coming on and i'm going to hand it over to josh in case josh has any questions he wants to throw at you Yep. Yep. For sure. It's definitely refreshing to see things like that uh, versus, you know, the cup win the past weekend, you know, where it's very monotone and boring and thank you very much and move on to the next race. So uh, we love that. Love the passion. And, you know, honestly, um, Derek here, he's um, I've been doing the shoe show for a few years now and, and Derek's uh, uh, come, come along this year to uh, be a co-host and he's kind of opened my eyes up to how um, there's a lot of really cool stories in the uh, Arca garage. Uh, and it's kind of cool and refreshing because a lot of these guys um, in the cup garage, like it, it's it's for blue collar guys like us, it's kind of hard to relate to them. So kind of cool to see, um, you know, these backstories and these guys that are, you know, just like you just, you know, working hard. And um, one thing I did want to mention we hadn't talked about was your um, uh, top choice fencing company and that, you know, not only are you you know, going out and, you know, winning races and, and doing cool things on the track, but you're also out there working hard in Indiana when, um, uh, when you're not on the track. So, uh, wanted to know kind of, you know, what, uh, top choice, how, how did it all come up, come about and how does that fit in with the racing schedule? Yeah. Um, I mean, it was just, uh, basically, <laughs> I, I started the fence company to earn extra money. I was racing sprint cars and was on the, the back of the trailer at Gas City. And I just noticed that every truck and trailer that came in, it was like a construction company. And I had built uh, two or three fences for, for houses that we had lived in because um, my wife and I had uh, dogs. And um, I was like, man, I wonder if I could make any extra money building fences. And... I put an ad up on what at the time was Craigslist and uh, um, I, I ended up with one job and then another job and then it just it just kind of snowballed and um, yeah so I don't do a whole lot of physical installations of fences uh, myself I, I do have installers and whatnot that work for me but uh, I manage the day-to-day um, you know, I sell all of our commercial stuff. I have a residential sales rep, so I do all the scheduling, material ordering. Um, so that does allow me to step away for a couple days at a time and, and go racing. So I, I got some good people that, uh, that have been with me for several years there and, um, that, that helped me make it happen. That's great. Awesome. Well, we're looking forward to uh, Talladega this weekend, and uh, we're uh, excited to cheer you on uh, for everybody watching. It's going to be the ARCA race uh, this Saturday at 
twelve thirty uh, Eastern time uh, on FS1 and MRN. Uh, we want to cheer on our friend Greg Van Alst in the thirty five machine. So go get that dub and get over that. Go get over that uh, that hump. Forget about that. Forget about last year. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. Awesome. Well, Greg, I appreciate you coming on the show, and uh, it was a pleasure having you. Thank you so much. Yep. Yeah. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. Greg, once again, thank you so much for coming on the shoe show. Uh, it means a ton that you take the time out of your busy day to come hang out with us. Uh, whether or not you're working on your ARCA car, whether or not you're uh, working with your fencing company, or whether or not you're just hanging out with the family, uh, you chose to hang out with us on uh, the shoe show, and it means a lot. So thank you so much, and I'm excited to see you get that win and uh, to get over that fear at Talladega this weekend. Uh, obviously, last year was a little bit of a – a little bit bummer and and kind of a bad memory. So we're excited to make a good memory and cheer you on. Uh, y'all, if you please uh, could like, comment, subscribe on YouTube. If you're on the audio realm, please rate and review. Let everybody know that you're listening to the shoe show and they should too. And if you have not hung out with us on Team Super Shoe on Facebook, the place where we all hang out and have much more conversation there than we do here. Otherwise, y'all, I appreciate you once again. Until next time, y'all, God bless, stay safe, and uh, go Greg Van Ost. <laughs>